So the playoffs are finally here, and what better way to kick it all off than bring in something different and unique to a party that you're going to, or maybe you're hosting a party. So what we're gonna do today is, we're going to have a three crock setup. We're gonna do mac and cheese, the man way. We're gonna do homemade baked beans, and we're gonna do pulled pork that you've never had before. Check this out. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with the mac and cheese that we talked about. The first, uh, the first thing I did ahead was I boiled up a half a box of my favorite pasta, which is penne, but you can use any kind of pasta you want. This seems to be the best for, for my taste. Um, so I cooked up a half a box of pasta according to its directions, but the only thing I didn't do is I didn't rinse it because what happens is when you rinse pasta with cold water, the pores in the pasta close up. And what we want is we wanna leave it so it's still warm and it's un untouched with any liquid because what's gonna happen is we want those pores to stay open so it sucks up that mac and cheese sauce that we're making the cheese sauce will be next. So what I've done is I've taken that pasta, I cooked it up ahead, and I left it kind of warm. I just put it aside. So you may want to rinse it, uh, just, or you may want to drain it just a little bit earlier than you normally would. Don't rinse it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw this in the bowl for now because we're going to end up mixing our sauce into that after. But the sauce is very, very straightforward, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take four tablespoons of butter and I'm just going to melt them down in the sauce pot. And with this, what we want to do is we're going to melt this down and we're going to start by making what's called a roux. We're going to make a flour and butter mixture that, uh, that actually thickens the sauce. So we'll melt this down. And I'm going to add probably about a quarter cup of, of white all-purpose flour. And what we're going to do here is we're going to cook that butter and flour mixture together and make what's called a roux. So this roux acts as a thickening agent when we add the cream, but see how I'm stirring it up and I'm breaking up those clumps of flour that are in there? Because we, don't, we, we want it to be a smooth sauce, we don't want it to be a, uh, a lumpy sauce. So, but you can actually see it cooking down. And the good thing about cooking this ahead like this is you won't get that real floury taste that you get when, um, when somebody makes a gravy and they don't cook the roux all the way out of it. It's okay to add roux later in, in a sauce, but like I said, you have to cook it out because otherwise you're gonna taste that flour. It's a dryness that you get in there. Okay, so we've got this now, and this is our standard roux. Now we're gonna take uh, a pint, maybe a little bit more than a pint of half and half. And just pour it right into that roux. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we want to bring the cream up so it's really warm because uh, let, let that roux finish cooking in that cream, it'll have actually thicken it and it'll also heat the cream up enough to actually melt the cheese that we're going to add. So while this is coming up, we'll talk a little bit about the cheeses. I have a half a pound of white American cheese, and that's really the foundation of the sauce. Uh, when I worked in a restaurant, a family style restaurant, uh, a really great chef taught me this, uh, this trick. And nobody would really imagine that American cheese would be in mac and cheese, but it really is. And it's a great foundation. It's going to be better than anything you've ever made, even those kits with the, with the liquid cheeses better than that. So this cream seems to come up now just a little bit more. We just want it to be hot because if you try to add the cheese now, it's going to burn before the cream actually melts it. So we'll give this just another minute. All right, so our cream is good. Now what I like to do is once the cream, and you may want to get a look at this box so you can see what it looks like, um, where it's just starting to bubble. You don't want to boil it because you don't want it to burn on the bottom of the pan, but you want it just to start bubbling like that. So you know the cream is going to be good and hot as you're stirring it up. Now I'm gonna fold in that half pound of white American cheese that we're talking about, slice by slice. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna shut this heat down too, because like I said, it's, this cheese will burn very, very easily. So I'm gonna lay uh, four or five slices in there for now, and then let's get in there and let's get that cream to really melt it down. You can see it's already thick. That hot cream is gonna melt that cheese down, so it's really like a really nice sauce. All right, and 
couple more slices to that. And there we go. Now we'll fold this in. And see how I'm just using a wooden spoon just to kind of bring all the cream around that cheese to really melt it down nice. The last thing I like to add to my cheese sauce is a little cracked black pepper. We're going to garnish with some of that nice shredded cheddar. I'm probably going to put about a half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper in there. And it's coming together nicely. So with the pasta, now you want this pasta to be sticky and dry, just like this here. You can actually see how it's, it's kind of sticking together here. So let's finish up on this cheese. I like, I like to make sure that the cheese is pretty much incorporated before I go and dump it in. But then we're gonna just dump this, this mixture right on over that pasta. Mix it up, get that sauce all around. Oh, look at that. Yes, indeed. All right, and then the last item I'm gonna add to this, now that I've got this already mixed, is I'm gonna add a cup of shredded cheddar. Now this is a blend, cheddar blend. And the reason why I wanna add this is because it gives it that recognizable color and it adds another dimension of cheese flavor to it. Don't be too cheesy. Some, like some of Bob's jokes. All right, so now we're gonna put it in, this is crock pot number one. So let's take this and we're good to go. Now, if you want, you can top this with breadcrumbs and bake it off in the oven, brown it up nice, or you can go just like this. And I'm gonna tell you, we're just gonna go just like this. Now, as it sits, those noodles are gonna suck that sauce right up and it's gonna be awesome. So the next thing we're gonna get into is I'm gonna show you how to start the pulled pork. So we're into our next segment here. What we're gonna do is the, the pork. We're gonna get the pork going. And I've got a four pound roast here. Now I've got bone in, but you can get the boneless kind if you like. It's a pork butt. And it's about, like I said, it's about four pounds. Uh, I like to keep the bone in because the bone adds a lot of flavor. It adds to that stock. Like, uh, like I, most of my braised stuff, I'll, I'll buy with the bone in because I think it adds something to the, uh, to the flavor. So, uh, but you can get the, the boneless butts. I'm just gonna drizzle some, some of the edge on top of it here. We're just gonna, it's a, I've trimmed a little bit of the fat off, but it's got the, I left some of the fat on there because we're going to sear it in this pan here. I'm going to get this pan good and hot, and I'm going to put maybe about a half a teaspoon of olive oil in there, and I just want to get the bottom wet so it doesn't stick. And what we're going to do is get this oil hot, and I'm going to add some edge on pretty much on all the sides of this here so we can get it good and... But you can also flour it. Like if you watch some of the braising episodes, that dredge it in flour, but our goal here is to shred this down. We don't need the sauce to thicken, we just need the pork to be nice and tender and shredded. So we don't need to necessarily flour this one. A um, couple different techniques to cook in this. As we sear it, let's go ahead and put that sear on there. Uh, you can actually do this in the crock pot, you could do it in the oven, uh, any any way of slow cooking, braising it in the oven or in a crock pot to uh, break down and let it simmer. You can set it, do this in the morning before you go to work. By the time you come home, it'll be falling off the wall. So. That's just another way that you can do it. We're going to set this up to go in the oven, and then we're going to get right into some shredded stuff that's ready to go. So we just really want to just kind of sear out the edges a little bit. And again, I just think it's something to uh, to browning it that adds a little bit more flavor, depth to the flavor. So, and there's nothing better than a pulled pork sandwich in the middle of a football game. I'm just trying to cover all sides here. And you hear me talk a lot about the brown bits on the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to add about a half a cup of house red wine. It can be Merlot, Burgundy, uh, usually it's dry. You can add about a half a cup right to that pan. And really what we're trying to do there is we're just trying to get the flavor of that, uh, that pork that's on the bottom of the pan. We're going to take the pork and go right into this hotel pan, half hotel pan here. And we'll take this wine that's deglazed the pan and we're going to add it right to it. And we're also going to add 
uh, about a quart of beef stock. Now notice I didn't add anything else to it, barbecue or anything like that. And that's about a quart right there. I had a little bit extra in here. And then we're going to cover it in foil. And we're going to pop it into a 350 degree oven for about two to two and a half hours. And then what we'll do is we'll check it and see if it starts to shred. And that's when we'll tell if it's shreddy or not. So we'll pop this right in the oven. So after taking the bone out and putting it, uh, you know, setting the bone aside, now I'm just taking all this meat here and I'm shredding it up. And any liquid that you have left, whether it's in the crock pot or in the pan, you can take that stock and reserve it. Because what we're going to do now is we're just going to take this pork and we're going to add it to our crock pot and add our favorite barbecue sauce to it. Look at how tender this pork is. It really just shreds right under a, right under a pair of tongs. It just comes right apart. And this is exactly how you want it. It's okay to leave a little bit of that fat in there too, because like I said, the fat adds to that flavor profile. So now I'm going to take it like this, and I'm just going to add my favorite barbecue sauce to it. Just give it a quick toss, and then put it right in that, right in that crock pot. And we'll hold that hot. And you can also add a little bit of the stock to the crock pot to keep it from uh, from drying out. If you wanted to keep it, if you're going to hold it for a long period of time. Then you can hold the uh, uh, hold the liquid in there to keep it from really being dry. But what we're gonna do, this won't last long. And we've got the crock pot number two set up. Okay, so our third and final crock pot that we're gonna do today is our homemade baked beans. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with about a half a pound of bacon. Uh, I've got the peppered smoked bacon, but you can actually use regular bacon and that would be fine. But I've got this here, it's a peppered smoke that's a half a pound and I've chopped it up into thin strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into this saucepan here and we're going to brown that up with about this one small onion. And we're going to let the fat from the bacon actually do most of the sauteing here. We didn't add any other fat to it, so we're just going to take a minute and we're going to let this bacon start to render. So after we've sauteed this, we're going to add, uh, I've got about two cups of navy beans. Now I know this looks a lot more than two cups, but what it is is two cups of raw navy beans that you boil ahead of. Parboil these and taking the liberty to, to cook them almost all the way. They're still crunchy. There's still a little snap to them. And that's how you want them. You want them almost all the way done. And it is kind of a shortcut because you can make beans from scratch and let them actually cook right in the, in the stock here. But this way here, this is for the real time, so you can have this actually within the same day. You don't have to wait forever for them to cook. So, parboil them on the stove, and I usually let them go for probably about, I don't know, almost an hour, I think I let them cook for. So, uh, they're, still, they're still firm, but they're mostly cooked. So, we're going to add those two cups of measured dry beans after they're cooked right to that bacon and onion. We're going to stir that up. And then, we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. And I've got about a quarter cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of molasses. About a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. About a teaspoon of spicy brown. You can use regular yellow mustard too if you like. But I'm going to use just about a teaspoon of spicy brown mustard, and just about. About three teaspoons of ketchup. And just stir up all of those flavor profile ingredients, and then we'll add our liquid and let them start to simmer. Now it's, turn, it's already turning that darker shade of baked beef. Oh wow, the smells that are on this, holy smokes. Because it's, it's concentrated now. Now we're going to add our stock and our water. I've got about a cup and a half of beef stock that I'm going to pour right in there. And a cup and a half of water. And then what you do now is you let these cook probably for about another hour or so on simmer. You just let them cook right down. What's going to happen is the beans are going to finish cooking in this broth that we just created. And that liquid's gonna evaporate, it's gonna get a little more concentrated. And the last thing that I would add to this would be the edge. 
for the salt. And we've talked about this before, adding the salt at the end is more of a, uh, if, you, if you add it too soon, it's going to reduce down and be really positive. So, so we'll add that at the end. Now we're going to let this cook down, and then once it simmers for about an hour, we're going to add it to that third crock pot. So now that these beans have cooked down for that hour that we talked about, I'm just going to add a pinch of the edge. Add them. Yeah. Look at how nice and thick they are. We're going to add them right to our third crock pot. And there you have it, ladies and gents. This is our version of a tailgate. Now, see, the great thing about it is you're bringing three things that you're not expecting to have at a tailgate party. You've got mac and cheese, you've got homemade baked beans, and there's a chance it might be some pulled pork tip, but not like this. You add your favorite barbecue sauce to that, and you're good to go. It's going to be awesome. And look at this, you got a nice affordable little setup here. You just take it right to the party and you're good to go. All right, so our featured beer today, normally it's wine, but because it's a tailgate party, we figured we'd feature a nice beer. It is the Brothers Reserve Prickly Pear Braggot. And we actually sampled a couple of different micro brews, and we found this one to be nice and fruity. And it goes really, really well with the pulled pork, especially. But then you get to bring the sweetness out in the beans. So we thought, that a nice sweet mid-range beer, as you can see, that's not um, it's not too dark, it's not too light. It's got a nice uh, nice balance, and it's very very sweet too because it's made with uh, prickly pear juice, and it's also got honey in it too. So, oh yeah, that's nice. That's gonna go real well with a nice pulled pork sandwich. I want to thank you for joining us in our magic madness and mayhem. Hopefully, your football team is still in it. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash chef. You can also visit our website at anodizechef.com. I've got a chef's blog, we've got the episodes up there, and we also have great wine reviews by Bob. Or you can check us out on Twitter, anodizechef, the anodizechef, the show, and Robert underscore Sutton. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.